We have ended the war on American energy, and we have ended the war on beautiful, clean coal. Good evening, and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jenna Flanagan. Over the holiday weekend, while we all paid attention to Turkey, our families, football, and Black Friday sales, an ominous and dire government report issued by the U.S. Global Change Research Group came with a blazing headline that almost got lost in our holiday festivities, and it's one we can't afford to ignore. Issued by a group of scientists who represent 13 federal agencies, they have all come to the same conclusion. Climate change will shrink the U.S. economy by at least 10 percent and will kill thousands of Americans in about 80 years. That may not be in our lifetimes, but if you have children and grandchildren, this will be their reality. The findings delivered on a typically slow post-Thanksgiving news day fly contrary to President Trump's offset message that climate change is a hoax. But just 24 hours before the report was released by his own administration, the president, reacting to cold temperatures that hit the Northeast, tweeted, quote, whatever happened to global warming, end quote. This breaking news is part of our Peril and Promise initiative here at PBS on climate change and its potentially devastating effects. For more precise insight into the government's report and what this means for all of us in the tri-state area is Bill Olfelder, frequent guest here on Metro Focus, and the New York Executive Director of the Nature Conservancy. Bill, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Jenna. It's a really important topic, so I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it's a very unfortunate topic, um, but one that uh, this seems like it could be news, but it's not news because this is already, we're already feeling the effects of climate change. Absolutely. And that's, while the report is focused on these long-term impacts, and really what they did was the last report, volume one, talked about the clear science. This is really about the economic costs and hardships to the United States. And what they're saying is 80 years, end of the century, it will be catastrophic in many ways. But I would argue we're seeing so much of this today already with a degree Celsius warming already in the past century. So the question is, what are we going to do now? Do we have what it takes to be able to bend the trend to forestall some of these big big economic effects. Well, the report is uh, a lot to absorb for the average person, even myself. And uh, with, you know, changes to things like crops and, you know, flooding, et cetera, what are we looking for, looking at for New York? Well, exactly. This is a national in scope. New York, I think the biggest effects we're going to see here are sea level rise, which not necessarily storms, just full moon, high tides and the impacts that they'll have storm surges like what we saw with Hurricane Sandy. Third will be heat waves, a lot more of them, a lot worse. And then fourth is just big rainfall events like what we experienced upstate with Hurricane Irene just before Sandy. These are all gonna put massive stresses on our infrastructure, on our economy and on our people. Now, this report came out after uh, Thanksgiving, so people didn't have a chance to digest it or argue it at the table. But for people like the president who say, well, it was cold, we had a freezing cold Thanksgiving, so what are we talking about? Just help me understand how that fits into the climate change picture. Well, the, the trends are all clear and the models are all clear. And in fact, what's worrisome is things are heating up and things are being affected like the drying of Western forests faster than even some of the models predicted. But of course, there's gonna be uh, variability. So we had the incredible cold period. Mm -hmm. And then just a few days later, it felt like spring here in New York City. So you get these oscillations, these up and downs, that's all normal. But the trend is very clear. We've seen a degree Celsius or almost two degrees Fahrenheit warming in the last century. And the concern is we'll go to two more degrees Fahrenheit or even beyond in this century. And that's where you start to get these impacts of $150 billion in you know, infrastructure impacts and crop losses each. I mean, every one of these categories, they're talking about north of $100 billion a year in effects. It could get, they talk about 10% of the US GDP. The US GDP is $20 trillion. We're talking about two trillion dollars in effects just in the United States as a result of climate change. I was going to say, and uh, here in New York City, we saw how long it took some of those tunnels to come back after Hurricane Sandy. Um, but for people who are, now they've had a chance to read it, now they've had a chance to hopefully try to digest this report, what is it that the average person can do? 
Well, I think there are three important things that I always suggest to people. So one is recognize that the outcomes here are not inevitable. So there is no cliff we're driving off as a society, as a country, as a world. Every choice we make has the ability to dampen the amount of carbon pollution going into the atmosphere and reduce the effects. So one is vote. Vote for elected officials who understand climate change and are going to take steps to address it. Two is we need to get a price on carbon, reduce the demand for carbon emitting you know, pollutants like fossil fuels and push things like renewables and the role of nature in sequestering carbon and creating better lifestyles. Three is every decision we make, how we go to work, whether we recycle, whether we compost, all of those things, those little micro signals we send in the system matter. And then lastly, offset your carbon footprint. At the end of every year, here we are close to the end of the year, I do a calculation of how much carbon pollution my family and I have emitted, and we plant trees, we invest in tree planting as a way to offset that. So it's a really easy step to do at year end. Feels really good and helps address this big challenge we face. All right, perhaps a new Black Friday uh, tradition instead of just shopping. Listen, Bill, I wanna thank you so much for joining us and giving us some definitely needed understanding on a very devastating report. Thanks, Jenna. Thank you.